more and more people travelled on the Fat Controller's railway. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. The trucks complained bitterly. But then, trucks always do, and no one takes much notice. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings. There, groaned James. That's enough complaining, said the Fat Controller. You'll be pleased to know that a new goods engine will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The Fat Controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. Then send the other one back at once. I can't, sir. The two engines are exactly alike and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. The Fat Controller seized his hat. We'll soon settle that nonsense. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers. And me has slyly slipped off, sir. You know her as the engines spoke in chorus. And what are your names? Donald and Publis, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which of you is which. He doesn't know our names, sir. Who could he? We only gear ourselves names and we lost our numbers. One of you, said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald 9 and Douglas 10. Now 9 and 10, smiled the inspector. Here is Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my advice. Watch out for Golden Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Then fess yourself. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, snickered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up. You wouldn't be making fun of us now, would you? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. Oh, uh, no, no, certainly not. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the bossy and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at half past three, Gordon steams in with the express. There's also a special coach for passengers traveling to places on Thomas's branch line. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a goods train to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding, then steamed off to join Donald at the water column. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? What coach? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. And he hurried away. What sheiks, cried Douglas. I must have stood away the special coach with the others. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. Now listen, we'll change tenders and try and avoid trouble, said Douglas's driver. So Donald, with Douglas's tender, set off from the yard with a goods train, while Douglas and his crew remained with innocent expressions. Ah, oh, number nine, called the fat controller. And why haven't you taken the goods? My tender is at eye, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see. He turned to the mob of passengers. Please accept my apologies for what happened. I shall investigate the matter immediately. Good afternoon, everyone. The fat controller watched the three passengers till they had climbed up the station ramp. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he snapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? 